and welcome back to another episode of Last Minute Laura. My name is Laura and today I'm going to be doing a couple of things. The main one, the reason that I'm filming the video, is a dye experiment. It's the end of summer nearly and my mom was separating some of her iris plants um, in order to propagate to make more iris plants for next summer. However, when you separate iris plants, some parts of the root get left behind. So, being me, I started looking on the internet and in some natural dye books to see if iris roots had any good dye properties. And it turns out that it may be able to make a very dark black. So, I went to the farm today and I collected all of the iris bulbs that aren't being used to be propagated. So these ones just aren't going to grow a new plant. Rather than being compost or put in the burn pit, now they're going to hopefully turn into some beautiful dye. That's the goal anyway. I'm not really sure how because if you look at the inside of these roots, they're a very stark white. Maybe there's the slightest yellow hue to it, but overall it's pretty much pure white. So I also, collected a big bundle of chocolate mint, which I'm going to hang up to dry in our cold room because you can never have too much dried mint. So that's a job that I'm going to do while the yarn is getting prepared to be dyed. But first, I have to take all of these iris bulbs, I have to wash them, and then I'm going to cut them up into a little bit more manageable pieces. After that, I'm going to add them to my pot Fill it with pH neutral water, so about pH of 7. I'm going to fill it with water and then I'm going to put it on the stove and let it simmer. Probably for about an hour or two, I'm going to let it go until all of the pigment seems to have come out of the roots, if any at all. Um, and then we're going to dye some wool. So for today's project, I'm going to be using Briggs and Little Regal Wool, which is a two-ply, 100% pure wool um, yarn. I'm using the color washed white, so it's not quite a uh, bleached sharp white. It's a little bit more naturally beige-ish yellow, but it should still pick up color if we're working with black. So that's the hope. Oh, also for a mordant, my plan for this dye bath is to do two mordants. I don't know if it's going to work out that way, so don't hold me to it, but I'm thinking we're going to do alum as a pre-mordant, and then after the dye bath, I want to do half of the skein dipped in iron water solution so that I can see what iron provides and what alum provides. I'm using a pickling food grade alum today, and I'm using a homemade iron mordant solution that I made from vinegar, water, and rusty items. I'll show you right here. That's what I'll be using for my iron solution. Very neat. This one is still active, so I'll be using a little bit of an older one. Um, but I'm going to get started first with tying up my skein so that it is ready to be dyed, and then I will add it to my big pot of water with soap to begin the scouring process for the wool prior to pre-mordanting the wool. While all that's happening, I'm going to wash and cut up these iris bulbs. So, let's do it! Alright, so now my skein is all tied up and ready to be scoured. Scouring is just a fancy yarn dyeing word for washing the wool thoroughly to get all of the oils off. So, like I said, pH neutral soap, hot water, and it's gonna sit in there probably for half an hour or until the water looks a little bit cloudy and a little bit dingy. That means all of the oils have released from the fiber and then the fiber will be ready to be mordanted. This part's not gonna be too interesting because my back's gonna be to you, so I'll just zoom through it. Okay, so the next step, um, I should first say, it's not really important at this point to get every little speck of dirt off. Obviously, I don't want like chunks of mud because there's minerals in mud and you don't want them to affect the color that you might get. 
But the next step, I'm just going to cut the bulb part into a couple of pieces just to make more surface area for the die to leach out. I'm not going to trim the roots if I can help it because I want them to be easy to remove after I'm finished dyeing. But I'm going to show you one of the cuts that I'm going to make just so you can kind of get an idea. I'm just sort of going for something maybe about the size of a loony or a toony if you're in Canada, but if you're not in Canada, maybe the size of, I don't know, something like a small radish. It just needs to cut up so that there's a little bit uh, more surface area, easier for the dye to leach out. So I'm just going to do that for all of these, and then I'm going to add them straight into the pot. I love the word iris. I love iris flowers. They're one of my favorite flowers in the spring because they're one of the first ones to come up in the spring. The little blue irises are my favorite. So much so that it's actually on my short list of names. If I ever happen to have a girl child, I will name her iris, I think. Or at least it's on the list. These kind of look like potatoes. I don't think they're edible though. Although, if you know anything interesting about irises, definitely let me know in the comments below. I love finding out new things. In these dye videos, people are um, often commenting things I've never heard about. I learned a lot about turmeric on the, the video where I used mustard to dye fabric yellow. So, if you know some interesting stuff about irises, definitely let me know. Also, while you're here and I'm flailing a knife at you, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. If you like the video, I know that you liked it. I know the video was good for you. And also it helps me, it helps the channel grow. And the channel is definitely on a growth pattern right now, which is very exciting for me. But yeah, definitely like the video. It helps me out, like I said, and also it's free. All right, so I'm just gonna zoom through the rest of these um, iris bulbs. And uh, I'll come back to you when they are all done. And here are those iris bulbs. You can see they are super white. Uh, let's get the focus right, there we go. And I've got lots of roots in here. So that's what the irises are looking like after being chopped up. Now I'm gonna give them one more rinse, then I'm gonna add them to the stove. start with my stove at a medium high setting uh, just to bring the temperature of the water with the iris bulbs up and then once it gets to a gentle gentle just barely a simmer I'll turn it down to about medium medium low just to keep that gentle simmer for about an hour. it into a spider web. Okay friends, so the wool has been completely scoured. It's fully, the water is like murky and um, the wool is really clean. So now what I'm going to do is rinse out all the soap out of that water, out of that yarn, and then I'm going to mix up two different mordants. Off camera, I decided I wanted to add a second skein of wool, so I did that and I added it into that big pot. I'm going to need two pots for the second part. I'm going to mix up a mordant of iron water solution and I'm going to mix up a mordant of cream of tartar and alum powder. So I'm going to do that, like I said, in two separate pots. I'm going to do 
about a tablespoon of alum and a teaspoon of cream of tartar in that bath. And in the other one, I'm going to do about one cup of my iron water solution. I'm gonna put those back on the heat for about an hour just to let them do their thing. And hopefully by that time, our uh, day lily roots are going to be ready. The dye will be, I don't know. It's, I hope it works. I'm just, I'm kind of, the color's kind of brownish. So I'm wondering if the reaction with alum and iron is what makes it turn black, but we will see and I will let you know. to wait hopefully in an hour we're gonna see some color pay off and I'll let you know what it looks like then okay so I don't know if you could tell the lighting has changed because it has been all freaking day for this color to come out if you are using iris roots to try and make black dye I'll have you know it takes some serious time I've had this pot sitting on the stove for what seems like all afternoon and maybe it's also because it's like one of the hottest days of the year and we don't have our AC turned on so also my whole workspace is so hot <laughs> it's so hot in here I don't know if you can see on my face but I am melting and I'm also like crocheting with wool at the same time maybe I'm not doing the best things for how hot it is uh, but that's okay the Yarn is mordanted. It is ready for the dye. As soon as that dye looks good enough to put some yarn in, I'm going to do it. Um, but it doesn't yet. So I think I'm probably going to turn the heat off, I don't know, maybe in another hour if it's got nothing, and I'll just let it sit overnight and then maybe it'll age darker, like oxidizing. And then in the morning I'll heat it back up and add the wool. That's my plan right now. So I'll show you what it's looking like so you can see that it's not super duper dark black. Um, but maybe in another hour, something magical will happen and all of the color will just pop. I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic, I'm boiling freaking hot. All right, that's more like it. So it's the next day now. Our mixture is finally starting to have some darkness. Still not black, but it's definitely dark brown. So I'm gonna strain it out now. I'm feeling pretty okay with it. And then I'm going to split it into two different pots. One with the iron yarn and one with the alum yarn. So let's get that started now. that for probably 20 minutes just until it comes up to a simmer and then I'll come back to put the dye baths into these clear containers so that you can see uh, what the colors are looking like. Okay so they've both come to a simmer now. I'm just going to turn the heat off and I'm going to transfer the yarn and the dye liquid into these fish bowls that I actually got at the side of the road for free! already very clearly the alum has not given a hugely bright color I think it's going to be a nice brown but the iron has completely darkened to, a, to really a dark dark gray I don't know if it's gonna be black but dark gray at least so now I'm going to leave these dye baths here just sitting out on the counter probably all day. I'll probably come back either later in the afternoon today. It's about eight in the morning right now. So either later in the afternoon today or I will come back first thing in the morning tomorrow. I'm gonna check on the color in the afternoon to see what's happening. Um, but that's my plan right now. Also here is what the iris roots are looking after they were boiled. So you can see they've gotten much darker. Definite brown, 
dark brown hue. Okay friends, it's much later now, um, almost the end of the day and I am feeling like it's time to wash these out. This is looking seriously dark gray. This one, kind of lackluster in comparison, but itself, it is a beautiful color. It looks like it's gonna be a gold, some kind of gold. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take these out of their dye baths, I'm gonna rinse them in water, and then I'm gonna wash them out with a wool wash just to get all of the pigment out, and then we're gonna hang them to dry. are done ready to dry overnight so I will bring you in for a close-up so you can see the color I wouldn't call the dark one black I would call it more of like a smoky charcoaly sort of gray um, and the other color I actually really love it it's kind of got this super soft old gold vibe let me show you and here is that darker one it almost has like a purpley brown hue mixed in with the gray. So I'm just gonna leave these to hang, let them drip dry overnight, and then we'll show you how they look tomorrow morning. Okay friends, it's time for the final reveal. So again, this is what we started with, some washed white Briggs and Little Regal wool. It's two ply fluffy wool, and this is what the iris bulbs did. Ta-da! So when I mordanted in alum, we got this beautiful, warm, somewhat orangey toned beige. I really do love how this one looks, but even more exciting, a charcoal gray. This charcoal gray has some different hues in it. It's almost lit from within with some orange and a little bit of green in certain spots. So it's gray, definitely it's gray. You might even call it a really light black but it's definitely a distinctly different color than the alum provided. So if you see before and after, we definitely got some really cool color payoff. What do you think? Do you love it like I do? Because I mean, let's be honest, every single yarn that I make, every color that I make, I absolutely love. And this is no exception. I'm so happy with how these colors turned out. And they look so beautiful together. I find that even though they're very different colors, they have like a really similar spirit to them, I want to say, or, or like the vibe within is pretty similar. I'm really happy with them. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you like it, definitely give the video a like. It helps the channel out a lot and I really do appreciate it. But also, let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments, what do you think I should name these? I'm going to put them up on my shop. So they will be available for sale pretty soon. Probably by the time this video is up, you'll be able to see these on my shop. www.lastminutelaura.ca Definitely check that out if you're in the market for some natural hand-dyed yarns. And again, these ones were made entirely with the bulbs of iris plants. My mom harvested irises that she was dividing. I saved those which were going to end up in the burn pit or in the compost and made them into this beautiful colorway. So there you go. Thank you so much for watching, friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, don't forget to subscribe.